That's my jam. It feels kind of weird that you actually stopped. <laughs> I'm just now I'm no, I didn't mean keep going. <laughs> I'm 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 <laughs> Brett Crow. <laughs> How is everybody doing? <laughs> awesome. You know, I I normally I like to I like to hit Monday and leave the whole the whole world behind. You know, this is this is our little bubble in which we inhabit and have a lot of fun here. But you know, last last weekend was uh, was Father's Day, and I can't help but uh, I can't help but think about my dear old dad. He uh, <laughs> he gave me some of the worst advice. I, said, I mean, you got to understand, he was not. How do I put this? Well, well, first of all, he had a hand raising me. Uh, he's, yeah, you can kind of see where this is going. But you know, he's the kind of guy. But you know, he was cool. He told me not to double down on a six, which was possibly more useful if he had waited until I could count to six to tell me that. His advice was dubious, but I think it was all very well intended, so I would take it all with a very large rocky grain of salt and, and do what I could with it. I, I do remember one piece of his advice that has rung in my ears for years, and it can only be done justice if you do it kind of as him, so bear with me while I try to summon up my father, who's this guy, and he's just kind of, you know, he's like this, and he says, son, I could give two gold-plated craps what you do with your life. I really could. I couldn't care at all. I don't care if you decide to be the president of these United States, or hey, you can end up a freaking janitor, whatever. But you give it your all. You overcommit. You do everything you can. You give it 110. You know what I'm saying? And this is what he said to me. Well, this gets stuck in my head my whole life. And I, I realize my whole life is on some twisted level overachieving to be that janitor. <laughs> and it sticks with me no matter what I'm doing. In the last week, I have been a lot of different things. I was the mad knife juggling gypsy in front of the Cub Scouts. It was, it was sensational and nobody died. <laughs> I was... <laughs> Also true. I, um, I ended up being a, a, a steampunk clown at a wedding that was outside over the weekend, which was great, except that it was so sweaty that while my nose and my eyes and my mouth were melting off my face, my smile, I did my job, never went away. And so I had that. And then at one point, I got to play a mime riding a penny farthing bicycle in front of 15,000 people. The circus freaks and I were invited out to Fair Park Sparks, and I got to ride my penny farthing bike with Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, which was awesome. And we had a really amazing day, and you know, like I said, I was playing a mime, and I left several people speechless, including myself. So that was good. But those are not the moments I remembered. Those are the moment I remember most in the last week was I played to a small audience of two, two people. One was, it was a pair of brothers, one was older, one was younger as brothers sometimes are. And I was in my dramatic role as a caterpillar. Thank you. So I was a caterpillar. What happened was, on Tuesday and Thursday, I've talked about this before, we have a thing called the Clown Gym over at Valley View Mall. Come join us, learn circus stuff. Invariably, because we do this out in public, people come by to watch what we do. Well, this is great at the beginning. We're very pumped up and we're having a good time and it's lots of fun. But at the end of the night, when we're out of calories, it's, it's not as much fun. We're sweaty. It's not a show. It's not like this. It's, you know, sweatpants and disgusting. But these two kids come up and they sit down on the ground. Big brother in front, little brother hiding in back. They want to watch the show. You, you can't say no. Not with that voice chanting your head, give it 110. Overcommit. Be whatever you're going to be, but really be it. So next thing I know, sweaty and tired, I'm juggling a little bit and doing some tricks, and I'm getting into it, and they're getting into it. We're making faces. They try to make a weird face at me. <laughs> and we're doing that, and we're having fun. And then I'm done. I'm done, but they're not. I'm like, thank you. And they go, that, that's the bit, man. <laughs> I, you know, the, the obvious instinct is to go, good night, everybody, and walk away, but you can't do that. These kids are, you know, they're really small. You can't, you can't break their, their imaginations that way. 
So I'm stuck with these kids. I don't know what to do. I can't exit, but maybe I can find an exit strategy. And I look around, and there's a duffel bag. It's what we carry all the stuff to the gym in. So I climb inside the duffel bag. <laughs> Zip it shut. And Mississippi count off to about two minutes, thinking we're done, we're free. At last, poke open the hole, and the kids are still sitting there. <laughs> What's he gonna do? <laughs> Little one behind has come out from back. It's like, what is he gonna do? And I'm waiting for this. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm a duffel bag in my sweats. There's just no, there's, I can't now at this point, my, my dad's voice is very loud in my ear goes, you can't quit now. You can't, you're in the, you're in the thing now. You're in the bag, man. <laughs> You've made a choice. You're going to have to live with that for a while. My friends, the fellow circus freaks, being the good performing partners they are, decide to help by picking up the bag and dragging it across the gym and dropping it a little. The kids laugh. I unzip the bag. They're still there. Other people have come around. We've accidentally drawn a crowd. Okay. I think to myself, no problem. I'll just wait it out. It'll, it'll end eventually. <laughs> it can't go on forever. My, my good friends decide to help by taking all the things that go in the bag and, and stacking like juggling balls and my hat and some juggling clubs on top of the bag. Well, at this point, I unzip the bag and I start pulling them inside. When I get, the balls come in quickly. Qu the hat comes in. I reach up inside, pull the hat in. Then the two clubs come out. They're antennas for a minute. Then they go inside, and I belch. <laughs> and that's what we heard. Well, at this point, I'm committed. So I roll away from the kids, thinking I'll go to the other side of the gym, it'll be over, and then they'll leave. Roll over, wait, count to a couple Mississippis, look. What's the caterpillar going to eat next? <laughs> Crap. Well, one of the things we have is we have gymnastics mats and we have this big black tarp and I think, oh, I'll eat the tarp. And I grab the tarp, this gigantic black tarp, and I pull it inside the duffel bag, <laughs> shove it down between my knees. Now I can't move my legs. <laughs> I belch again. <laughs> Kids laugh again. Wait it out. A couple Mississippis later, peek out the bag. Nope, they're still there. That's it. I'm sorry. At this point, I failed. I figure it's all over. So I just roll towards them. <laughs> my hands by my head, my elbows in front of me thinking, I'm going to be bruised tomorrow. I'm going to be bruised tomorrow. I'm going to be bruised tomorrow. Why don't we work out on a floor that isn't made of concrete? I finally arrive in front of where I roughly think the two kids are. And I feel the two ends of the bag get tight. And I hear screaming, caterpillar, caterpillar, as they grab the bag and spin it in circles. <laughs> Caterpillar, caterpillar, okay, you win. Nothing to do now, but do what comes obvious and start throwing whatever is remaining in the bag back out. <laughs> this did improve because one of the things that was on top of the bag was Scott Rankus, our acrobat shoes, so they were no longer in the bag with me. Look, acrobat feet are serious business. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> I finally get to the tarp between my knees and I reach down and I pull it up and I stick the end of it up. And I think, oh, this is going to get a laugh. It's like a tongue. And I hear, the caterpillar is pooping! <laughs> and they help me pull extract it. I'm face down at this point because the bag flips over. I'm holding onto the bag for dear life because I have, at this point, clearly committed to this process. And I look down, and one of the things on my day-to-day -day hat I wear is a little Circus Freaks button I wear on it, and it's fallen off, and it's actually right below me. So I grab that, and I stick it in my pocket. At this point, there's only one thing left in the bag for the caterpillar to poop out. And so I make my dramatic reveal. <laughs> and everybody starts cheering, which is completely unfathomable to me. I stand up. I, the little kid at this moment runs away. <laughs> he just... <laughs> The 
older kid stays and we have a moment, I give him the button, I thank him for playing with me. He were really good and he walks off. And I'm, I'm now forced to clean up all this crap, well, caterpillar crap I left on the ground. So I'm cleaning up and, and the mother walks up to me. And she says, and, and, and I can tell that English isn't her first language. And she says to me, she says, thank you for, for, for playing with, with my boys. They're, they're her sons. I said, oh, you're very welcome. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun, actually, as stupid as I feel right now. And I'm sweating and heaving and trying to be as calm and collect. <gasps> I've been in a duffel bag for like 20 minutes at this point. <laughs> so I say thank you. And she, she says that, and she uses a word that she's clearly heard a lot but doesn't use often. She says, my younger son has the autism and doesn't normally play with people. I'm glad I could help, I think. She said to me, and you could tell she dug in deep with all of what she saw and looked for a word. And it wasn't a word she used often. And she said, thank you for helping him out of his cocoon. I'm crying at this point. This is like the best moment I could buy. Some of that's just the adrenaline wearing off. And I realized that we made a dent. It's a two-person audience, one performer. I get lost. 15,000 people was amazing and life-changing, and I'm never going to be the same. Two people was life-changing, and I'm never going to be the same. I, I, I carry all of these things with me. And places like this become important because tonight, we're going to try to do exactly what we did for those kids. We're going to try to take these performers that are here tonight and help them get out of those cocoons. This is the most magical butterfly garden I've ever seen. We call it the open stage. Welcome. And the best part is I will spend no portion of this evening in a duffel bag. <laughs>